Hi, I'm Anne Marie Lipinski. I'm the curator of the Neiman Foundation for Journalism here at Harvard, and it is my very um, great honor to welcome you all to Lippmann House for this uh, very special evening. Um, we, of course, want to welcome Marissa, um, tonight's uh, winner, this year's winner, and her husband, Mark Schweitzer. Thank you for um, coming here from uh, Indiana to join us today. Uh, and um, we have some other special guests. Uh, we have a board meeting tomorrow, so I'm really um, excited to have some of our board members uh, with us today. Um, Amy Abrams, uh, board chair John Harwood, um, Jenny Lee, uh, Rosenthal, Alves, uh, and newest board member, Wendy Thomas, who's just joining us um, on the board this year. Uh, and I also want to say that um, I was really happy um, that um, some, uh, some folks at Harvard who think very deeply about these issues are joining us um, this evening as well. And that includes um, our Iris and Simone here from the, yeah, hi, from the Crimson. They're reporters at the Crimson who um, cover Title IX issues and other things as well. So we're really happy to have you with us um, here tonight. Uh, and we also have um, some folks from the Office of the Provost and the President who uh, work on Title IX and also from the Sexual Abuse Prevention and Response uh, Office uh, at Harvard who, um, are, have, uh, who have followed the story and obviously care deeply about these issues at all. Can you just raise your hands? I do, I'm sorry. To, hi. Thank you so much for, um, for being here. Um, so just a little bit about this award. Um, Louis Lyons, uh, the man for whom tonight's prize is, is named, first came to the Neiman Foundation in 1938 as a member of Harvard's very first class of Neiman Fellows. Um, he was then named curator in 1939 after uh, Archibald MacLeish uh, was appointed um, chief librarian, or whatever the title was, of the United States of America, and um, vacating the role, and uh, Mr. Lyons um, succeeded him. So he, uh, impressively, he managed to accomplish that which many Neemans dream of, but only he um, succeeded at, and that was to stay for 25 years. Um, he ushered in a lot of important changes uh, in his time in this role. Can you imagine a Neiman Fellowship without women, um, without international journalists, or one limited um, just purely to newspaper reporters? Uh, neither could Lyons who paved the way for the richness of experience and skill represented um, in today's Neiman classes. And while those developments may seem obvious from where we sit today, they were not always uh, thus. Lyons admitted Neiman's first women fellows in 1945, which was 18 years before Harvard degrees were first awarded to Radcliffe women. When he completed his run as curator, an award was established in his name, and that is the reason we are here tonight together. Each year, the honoree is chosen by the class of Neiman Fellows um, to honor conscience and integrity. And over the years, the honored have included some of the lions of our profession, and I encourage um, our guests here to uh, look at that board before they leave um, tonight. It's every, um, every winner. Uh, since the beginning of the prize. It includes, you know, broadcaster Edward R. Murrow, um, David Halberstam, and others who covered the Vietnam War. Uh, it includes Gunawan Muhammad, uh, an Indonesian journalist and poet of great courage with whom uh, John Harwood and I had the privilege of sharing our, our Neiman year. In my time as curator, I've watched as fellows argue and debate what values they wish to stand for in choosing a Lions honoree. It is rarely easy and passions can run high, but the result is always, always, always inspirational. They have focused a bright light on some of the most inspirational work of our time and the different ways that courage can be exemplified, whether by uh, Mohammed Naboos, a so-called citizen journalist who was killed in Libya in 2011 while reporting on the Gaddafi forces' attacks on civilians in Benghazi, or Pamela Califf, a Texas journalist uh, who reported and edited tenacious investigations into wrongful conviction. Conscious and integrity are um, elusive qualities and sometimes easier to define in the breach. 
And we sometimes make the mistake of beholding them as the exclusive domain of someone who covers um, war or who are daily risking their lives to do their work. But there are places where the very act of asking questions can be regarded as treasonous or stories so pain painful and so deeply buried in a culture or a community that unearthing them expands our appreciation for journalism as an act of conscience and integrity. Uh, in that vein, tonight we add Marissa Kwiatkowski to the Lions Pantheon, a reporter chosen for her years of work exposing flawed systems that were designed to protect children and to her contributions to journalism that exposed the sexual abuse charges against USA Gymnastics and Michigan State uh, University physician Larry Nassar. As a result of the work that she and her colleagues did at the Indianapolis Star, hundreds of women came forward with allegations of sexual abuse against Nassar. And this was, um, they were in the vanguard. This was really before, you know, hashtag Me Too was, um, was a, a, a national phenomenon. Thank God we had these journalists, said the Michigan Assistant Attorney Gen uh, General Angela Pavilatis, who uh, was addressing the court where Nassar was sentenced to up to 175 years in prison. She added, we as a society need investigative journalists more than ever. What finally started this reckoning, she said, and ended this decades-long cycle of abuse was investigative journalism. Without that first Indianapolis Star story in August of 2016, without the story where Rachel, who was one of the victims, came forward publicly shortly thereafter, he would still be practicing medicine, treating athletes and abusing kids. Let that sink in for a minute, she said. Right now, he would be at his office, not far from this courtroom in the Michigan State University campus, abusing children. Had it not been for the work of investigative reporters and Rachel who brought this case forward, we know federal law enforcement did not stop him, nor did trainers or coaches or deans or medical supervisors. The great tradition of the Lions Award is that it is decided by the sitting class of Neiman Fellows, <clears throat> and I offer special thanks to the class of 2019, in particular to the Lions Award co-chair Samantha Appleton and Yoshi Nohara. Thank you so much. You'll hear, both, you'll hear from both of them a bit later when they introduce Marissa. Uh, and I'm so grateful for the care um, that the class took and the dedication um, that you brought to the task. And um, I offer a warm and grateful toast to this talented class of Neiman Fellows. Thank you. All of you, of course, uphold the values that we honor here tonight. Please enjoy your dinner. In a bit, we'll hear from Sam and Yoshi as they introduce tonight's program. Um, again, welcome. We're all so glad that you're here. Thank you. Thank you.